So the laundromat had been robbed two days before and the owner had painted on the wood, yes, we're open, so as not to lose business. Where do you live, she asked. There, I said, pointing up to the third floor. You live there? There. I had to look to where she pointed, the third floor, the paint peeling, wooden bars Papa had nailed on the window so we wouldn't fall out. You live there? The way she said it made me feel like nothing. There. I lived there. I nodded. I knew that I had to have a house, a real house, one I could point to. But this isn't. The house on Mango Street isn't it. For the time being, Mama says, temporary, says Papa. But I know how those things go. Hmm. So there's a possible thematic idea of of lying, of of um, not lying in a malicious way, but but lying because the parents feel like they need to keep their children's spirits up. But it seems to me that Esperanza is getting old enough now to realize that those are false promises. So lying or deceit uh, could be a, a possible thematic idea to focus on too. Let's keep going. Hairs. Everybody in our family has different hair. My papa's hair is like a broom all up in the air. And me, my hair is lazy. It never obeys barrettes or bands. Carlo's hair is thick and straight. He doesn't need to comb it. Nenny's hair is slippery, slides out of your hand. And Kiki, who was the youngest, has hair like fur. But my mother's hair, my mother's hair, like little rosettes, like little candy circles all curly and pretty because she pinned it in pin curls all day. Sweet to put your nose into when she's holding you. Holding you and you feel safe is the warm smell of bread before you bake it. Is the smell when she makes room for you on her side of the bed still warm with her skin. And you sleep near her. The rain outside falling and Papa snoring. The snoring, the rain, and Mama's hair that smells like bread. So clearly some element of comfort there with that comparison. Mama's hair represents comfort and kind of peacefulness and uh, stability amid all of the turmoil of moving houses left and right and their family being uprooted constantly. Lastly, the last section for today called Boys and Girls. The boys and the girls live in separate worlds. The boys in their universe and we in ours. My brothers, for example, they got plenty to say to me and Nanny inside the house, but outside they can't be seen talking to girls. Carlos and Kiki are each other's best friend not ours. Nanny is too young to be my friend. She's just my sister and that was not my fault. You don't pick your sisters, you just get them and sometimes they come like Nanny. So maybe not a dislike of Nanny, but just the age difference. She can't play with those Vargas kids or she'll turn out just like them. And since she comes right after me, she's my responsibility. Someday I'll have a best friend all of my own, one I can tell my secrets to, one who will understand my jokes without me having to explain them. Until then, I am a red balloon, a balloon tied to an anchor. There's a metaphor there to round it out. So clearly there's some loneliness as a thematic idea in her life. Uh, it seems to me that while Carlos and Kiki are closer in age and both boys, they, they have a bond. But because of how much the family has to move around and because of the age difference with her sister, Esperanza doesn't quite have that same close friend. And she certainly longs and wishes for it. So now that we have this information, how can we apply it to our writing, which is what you will all do with your LDGs. So the next couple of slides are going to take you through how you can take what you read and apply it to your reading response for today. So let's take a look at that.